Hello and welcome back to the third part of building a Stirling engine. On the last time I've made the brake system so you can adjust the speed of the flywheel and uh, the flywheel also runs with almost no friction and uh, yeah the front section of the engine is now finished and now we're moving to the left side which is the hot side of the engine. Um, a Stirling engine has a hot and a cold side so um, yeah all the parts you see on the table are for the hot side and this part is the cylinder uh, a glass tube will slide from behind and in there uh, will be a, a displacer piston which pushes the air from one side to the other and that's the principle of the Stirling engine and unfortunately I've made some mistakes um, with this part so if you remember this clip I had to make the holes bigger that's because these holes are too big for the screws I intend to use so I have to use the next bigger screws and that's why I have to make all the holes a bit bigger and also the hole in the middle is too small um, yeah I've made a bit of mistakes on this uh, not only this part but in general with this Stirling engine um, because it was more like a prototype and I've learned a lot of things and I hope there will be a part two or not part two a second version of this engine which will look similar but without all the mistakes and um, yeah I hope you enjoy this video and if you have any questions leave them below I'm happy to answer them and um, yeah please enjoy this video and I stop talking now So the cylinder will sit like this, but it is not air tight or air sealed. And with this tool, I'm just cutting a groove. So there's a silicon seal which uh, holds the engine air tight because it is very important that the Stirling engine um, is air sealed and uh, no air can escape because otherwise it will not run. And here I'm using some really fine sandpaper to grind the inner surface of this cylinder um, because the piston rod has to run through it really smooth and I'm repeating this process again until the piston rod doesn't have any friction in there. Here I'm attaching the silicon uh, ring on there and with a bit of super glue which is also heat resistant 
this thing, these two parts are holding really tight together. Here I'm just checking if everything went as planned, uh, if there's no gaps in between and uh, if the threads are good enough and uh, it looks all very good and promising. So now this is the piston rod, uh, which is actually, I don't know which kind of steel it is, but it is really, really hard to work with and unfortunately I don't have the right tools for it, but I barely managed to get this part um, as I want. Unfortunately, um, the tiny holes on the side are not centered, but it's okay. I mean, this is where the um, connecting rod will hold in place by a little pin. Now I'm just filing the displacer piston around on the end. Uh, there are a lot of tools for this job, but I don't have them, so I just do it old school by hand and it works really well, but it just takes a bit of time to get to the end result. But at the end it looks very good. So here I'm just testing if everything is airtight. Nice. And this part is really crucial because um, this is just a tiny pin which sits between the um, piston rod and connecting rod. And uh, this pin has to be really tight because if this piece is uh, a bit loose, um, the engine will make some noise if it's running. And my goal is that this engine will run um, really quiet so you can't even hear the engine run and for that reason every part has to be really precise so there's not much room to move around and um, yeah this tiny piece this is just a tiny pin yeah it was really hot um, yeah it is really crucial that this has the right dimension I think it is a bit too small I have to test it and maybe I have to make this part again. I don't know, we will see at the end.
I'm just sliding the connecting rod on the uh, sliding bushing because there's no need for glue or anything else because there's no there are no forces um, that pushes the bushing out of the connecting rod so that's just good enough. So if you wonder why I'm um, making the outer surface of this glass tube um, yeah, a bit rough with the sand sandpaper it is because uh, in Stirling engine there's a bit of pressure and if the glass is too smooth uh, it will get pushed out from the pressure so that's why I'm just using a bit of sandpaper to get the outer surface a bit rough and um, therefore it can hold better in place and at the end you won't even see the rough surface because it is in the um, cylinder and here i'm just grinding the inner surface of the cylinder again because um, it wasn't smooth enough and um, maybe i'm doing it again but uh, we will see it is most important that it's airtight and also smooth running. So here I'm just pushing the um, piston in the cylinder and by holding my finger on the tip I can see if this um, yeah, cylinder is airtight or not and um, I'm just pulling and pushing with the sealed um, piston uh, cylinder and um, yeah it's actually very airtight so that's good and important. Now you can see all the parts coming together and at the end it's actually working and it is just fascinating to see that some pieces of metal and glass uh, can make an engine which is running just by heat. It amazes me every time I see it and build it. So I enjoy it very much and I hope you enjoy it as well watching it and um, yeah, if you have any questions leave them below and I will see you on the next part. Bye!